This is The Sam Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of The Pit Stop, where you, the pit crew, you are the real star of today's show. Here we are on a beautiful Wednesday, hot lap hump day Wednesday. Hump day, Mike, 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 Mike. I love Wednesdays. We are working for the weekend. Hope all is well with all of you out there. I have been super duper busy working on a bunch of different things. Uh, obviously, we're still playing with the new layout. Things are a little different than from even Monday's show where we did the first time doing this. I'm still learning little tricks. Don't know if you noticed, but like this side of my desk is kind of disappearing. I'm getting a lot of reflection in things that I got to kind of solve. Uh, but we will continue to work on it. But I think things are still looking good and feeling good. That's for sure. We got our uh, donations and our latest subscriber thing working this week, I do believe. So uh, uh, some improvements are still happening, believe it or not. And since it went overall fairly well, I actually have completely reconstructed the studio. So you can't see the differences now with what you're doing. But what I've been through in the last 48 hours is total insanity and probably the kind of insanity that any sim racer can relate to where you literally turn your life upside down to make an improvement to your sim rig, uh, to make an improvement to your sim life. And, and that's kind of what I've done, a whole evolution. I'll tell you a little more about that at the end of the show. And uh, I'll have more on that coming up soon as well. So what is going on in the world of sim racing this week? Uh, middle of the week, you know, in the summer, here we are in the summer, things are a little bit slow. If you if you are out there in leagues, you might notice a slight decline in the amount of people showing. And Doug, testing out the system for us. Thank you very much, Doug. Much appreciated. Doug Hawley. You know, let's give a shout out to Doug Hawley. Doug Hawley is about to move. He's moving from Bakersfield. He's almost a neighbor of mine living here in Southern California. Um, and he is moving. He is leaving us and going to South Dakota and will be away from uh, sim racing for a while. Well, I see the super chat definitely uh, worked on the chime. I just got to get our graphics in on that. And I do not see an update down there on the bottom um we're gonna have to work on that i thought we had it solved it did update but it doesn't seem to be updating during the show which makes it just about useless to me as far as that um this is my hump day guess what day it is <laughs> um anyway so uh best of luck to you doug maybe sunday night we can do a one last uh uh hurrah before you pack things up uh <laughs> See, Max is down for that, that's for sure. Um, anyway, all right, let's get into the news. We will do some more testing and things. We'll do more improvements, I guarantee you. I, I want the best for this show. Still don't like the cutoff arm aspect of uh, the, the box that I've got going here. Um, anyway, all right, moving is the, you know, I wonder if it is just a... The amount of Windows microphone problems I have is just totally insanity. Um, let me look at one thing real quick. Um, microphone. Not sure what's going on there. Sorry, I'm just looking into it. You know, now my mic is, sorry. Test, test, test. Windows turned my microphone down to 51%. Thank you for that pickup on that, you guys. Sorry if I blew out your ears. We should be correct now, I do believe. I think we have it where it belongs. Sorry about that. I Ah, oh, the frustrations of running a show. Anyway, all right. iRacing, Hauser. Oh, also, I don't know if you noticed. It's probably going to get a little annoying, but... Um, I'm in a swing chair, a swivel chair now. Uh, I've... That's probably going to be a little distracting for me. All right. Hauser takes the win. Cannon claims the World of Outlaw late model points lead at Eldora. So in what is the... God, they have so many disciplines of what we would consider the, the top. Uh, we used to just call it the World Championships. Now they're all esports with money on the line and things going on. Hauser takes the win. Cannon claims the World of Outlaw's late model points lead in Eldora. In addition to that... Kind of a cool video here, um, or image. I don't know if, I mean, I know a lot of you guys saw the pit crew, crew uh, the aged pit crew. I guess there's an aging photo thing going on on Facebook. I think I saw some of that kind of stuff going on there today. Uh, but Simon Pagano, real life uh, IndyCar driver, 
went to Iowa Speedway on iRacing today, pretty close to the real thing. And he posted a picture of him in his sim at home. And uh, there's the real car, in car, from the shop versus his in sim car. Yeah, they're close, but I wouldn't say identical. But Simon Pagano giving a pat on the back to iRacing. Max is super excited about that. I wonder what's going on right now that has my dog flipping out. Uh, Dirt fans, Wales is now part of uh, the rallies that you can take part in. We see the old uh, Porsche 911 there doing some dirt run. Xbox Deluxe players should get now begin to see Wales. Thank you for your patience while this gets resolved. So we have some screenshots of, oh, what do you know? It's foggy. Foggy in Wales. I think that's the, no oh, that's a beauty shot right there. Gotta like that. Very cool. Uh, the next phase of Dirt Rally 2.0 now happening. <laughs> He's testing mic levels. That's right. Hey, Joe, how you doing? Um, Kenneth, hot lap hump day. Yes, yes, for sure. Absolutely. Stay in my box. <laughs> oh, and speaking of my box... I have to correct this. I'm sorry. This is uh, this is gonna disturb me. I see a little bit of background pointing through. Even I'm gonna correct that real quick. Sorry. Hey, it's a test show. What can I say? I don't even like this gray gray line. We will fix this. Believe it or not, I will make this gray line right there. That to me is unacceptable. Um, and why I've not been a big fan of green screen. Not that the, I guess that does sort of have something to do with simmer. I don't like that great, that line. I don't like this fuzzy. See, when I put my hand there, it gets corrected. When I let the reflection in, that, that fuzzy is actually, um, seeing through it. It's, it's invisible. Um, the mic is still a tad hot. It's because I got it cranked up to 100. I, you know, I'm not going to go into my technical difficulties. All right, what else? Formula One draft. So we have our final 30. And I guess I, I you know, do I, am I allowed to just keep beating up on this topic? So this drives me nuts. So these 30 people who are into the draft, they all had to go through a whole qualifying procedure to earn the spots to be in the draft. Other drivers are already on teams. Some teams have kept their drivers from last year. Some drivers have kept one driver, let another driver go. Some have cleaned the slate. Um, I don't. I mean, to me, it's the weirdest thing because any team has already proven that they can just go draft any driver they want. Um, there are only so many spots. I don't even know how many spots are actually open to these 30 who qualified. They earned their way into the draft. Meanwhile, all the backyard deals are going on. Um, and one of the names on this list, right? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Kimmy Larson, second to last name we see here. Right up here at Checkered Flag, Kimmy Larson sees 2019 F1 Esport Pro Draft eligibility as a second chance. So he was a driver with Renault Sport Team Vitality. They let him go. And they already filled him in. They already talked about his fill-in. So the fill-in is not coming through the draft. His old spot is not open through the draft. But yet he is now in the draft hoping for one of the other spots to happen. Um, not a huge fan. I'm a fan of the draft. I'm a fan of what's going on. I'm not a fan of the very loose rules. Is it a draft process or is it a do what you want process and then what do these guys i mean i feel like these guys have gone through hoops to get here with very little being guaranteed back in their way um that that's 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 how i'm feeling about that uh you're dragon <laughs> watching poker till three i was playing some vr poker vr poker stars i think it was it was kind of fun except for that it was video poker and everybody there is acting like they're playing with play money which of course we are but it was like i hate sitting at tables where every hand they're just like all in all in all in uh that's not poker so anyway uh kimmy larson 
hoping to be picked up in that draft that is going on today. It will be live. The pro drive, uh, draft goes live at 1900 BST. Don't know the exact time. It will be televised, so to speak, uh, at F1 esport.com uh, so you follow this link f1 esport.com and the draft gets underway in one hour 48 minutes 42 seconds so we'll see how that plays out in about an hour after the show finishes well a little more than that hour and a half after the show finishes uh race room you know we talked about the uh, wtcr mod that came out with that beautiful selection of cars where is it we don't have to scroll that far, do we? Where'd they go? So much news out of race room. Uh, they are now starting up their uh, official eSport for that is beginning next week. So since July 10th, we got the new cars. F-I-N-T-12 days until they launched their new eSport. That was on the 14th. We're all the way up here now. Um, so get the FIA WT in our game store. Starting up on the 25th is when this is going to begin, so a week or so from now. Hey, Mitchie, how you doing? Oh, you missed Monday's show then. Yeah, we are playing with green screen, and we've been making a lot of changes behind the scenes. Uh, Fanatic, there was a little debacle in picking the winners, but if you remember that, what, $10,000 prize uh, winning two paddock club passes to an upcoming Formula One race. Uh, I would like to win that. Boy, so this is for the Germany Grand Prix. And Kano Light Racer, who commented on their YouTube uh, post, and Michael Hafedason. Hafedason. Oh, look what else we have. We are disclaimer back. Uh, commented on it as well. Mitchy Hoyer with the donation. Thank you. We're, we're testing a few things here. You weren't here for the beginning of the show, but... Our, our, our chat thing, we're going to get that switched out to a different one. I meant to take care of that and forgot to. Um, but our automation down there is not working. That's making me mad. I got to get that resolved. Um, I I have the script right. It's just not updating. Uh, here's another post from McLaren Shadow. And uh, again, you want to get me to keep ranting and raving about the F1 draft? This is almost makes me mad too. So... McLaren Shadow posting the F1 Esport Pro Draft takes place tomorrow. Who would be your pick? And, like, they're making it like I'm supposed to pick amongst these three as we look at Enzo, Benito, Bono, Hui, and Lando Norris. So I'm supposed to pick amongst these three? Well, number one, Lando Norris is a real-life driver. He's not in the F1 Draft. And Enzo and Bono are already on the team. Well, I can't pick them. That's my whole point here. Uh, there is no picking them. I would pick Kimmy Larson. That's who I'd pick. I'm just, just, just makes me a little upset. Could be so much better. That's why. It could be so much better. It's, it's not that it's horrible. It's that it could be so much better. Um, you spotted a meme? Not sure what meme that is. Uh, sounds like a loud input again. I think we're... I look good on my end, ProSim, Sean. Um, all right, so MotoGP talking about their eSport challenge. This being the toughest one yet. Online challenge number five is here. Book your place in the next round of the MotoGP eSport championship by taking on the formidable Circuit of the Americas on a motorcycle. That would be kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> the, oh, I gotcha, I gotcha. Um, I am not in the red on my mic. I mean, maybe if I blast off. No, I'm not, but maybe my reading isn't coming in right. Always working on things. Um, <laughs> all right, all right, did that do it? No, I'm flatlining, which... Is kind of odd that it's just hitting a peak, peak flat line. That's not really normal for that meter. Um, oh, always going to, you know, it's so hard. You know, I talk about games and, you know, when they're in beta, you can do a, a little test with five or six people and it works out great. And then you go live and... <laughs> Uh, anyway, prepare for a new journey as Train Sim World 2020 gets an Xbox One, PS4, and PS release date. 
So if you're really into the train sims, the latest, greatest version is coming out. And I'm still trying to read ahead and try to figure out when because I didn't really check. Um, Because it's train sim. No offense. August 15th is when you'll be able to play the latest, greatest. I know we have a few guys here who are into train sims. So that's why I do mention it from time to time. All right. Get ready. Get your wallets out. You know, you thought uh, uh, Prime Day. Prime Day probably sucks. Anybody buy anything good on Prime Day? Anybody take advantage? Was there anything good? I did see a good deal on a couple of sim wheels, like a T300 level wheel, things like that. I did see a handful of deals. Anybody get anything? Um, I bought something completely unrelated to sim racing, uh, but nothing that I'd be showing off here. Pimax is down to 600 bucks. Ah, oh, some of the deals are still going on, but it is for the most um, part over. Ah, catch bought a 27 inch 144 hertz Samsung monitor. Nice. Nice. Uh, Mitchie's doing an unboxing of whatever he bought in 40 minutes. You'll find that at Mitchie Hoyer Racing on YouTube. Train sim drag racing would be cool. <laughs> How fast can you pour the coal into your boiler? I guess I used two different uh, theories or types of engine. Locomotion. Uh, Dirt Rally is on sale for $7.99. That's the OG Dirt Rally 2 on sale for $29.99. Dirt Rally 2 Deluxe Edition for 30 So if you're missing out on all these DLC packs that come out, $39.99, that's 50% off on the new ones, 80% off on the old school, and that's on Humble Bumble, Humble Bumble Bundle, Humble Bundle. Slightly Mad Studios is now making the pro uh, version of the game available. This is the essential B2B software product. Hey, Jimmy, ah, oh, subscribe. Thank you, Jimmy, ah, oh, for subscribing. Now, if I can just, maybe I don't need those donation things on the bottom. Maybe I don't need those. Maybe those not working isn't a big freaking deal. <laughs> I want those working. I need those working. Project Cars Pro is basically, it's business to business software. This is the version of Project Cars that is built for an event, built for a sim center, built for public use not just for private use the way we use it. It could also be used by a race team looking for very specific content built for their purposes, whether they're using it in-house as a simulator or whether they're using it as their own promotional tool at events. That is the point and purpose of Project Cars Pro. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we all hear the word pro and we think, ah, oh, this is like the one they'd sell McLaren to use on their big super uh, access platform uh, simulator. No, I don't think that's the case so much. I think it's much more the case that if you're going to put 20 rigs in a building and you want to be able to link them together into an event, very easily pick options for each sim pod, let, let's call them, and launch that race. That is the point and the purpose of Project Cars Pro for the most part. Now available, and you're going to probably start seeing it, and the reason it's news to us, and we're going to talk about another sim racing center that opened up, and, you know, these are happening. Base 51, I need to get down there and do a show on it. I've been there and I've driven there. Uh, that's our local sim racing center that's backed by CXC simulations using their motion rigs. Um, so you might see more from Project Cars in that in that uh, uh, space moving forward. Uh, and here's the actual official website from Project Cars Pro. So if you want to check it out, you can check it out. ProjectCarsPro.com. Uh, talking about the ease, instant, hassle-free action for customers. Keyword customers. Maximize playtime. Maximize repeat visits. Visit Sim Center. Uh, and so on. They talk about it from the player perspective, from the staff perspective, multiplayer broadcaster perspective, and of course how it works with VR. Um, anyway, kind of interesting. Not necessarily something that's going to affect us on a daily basis, but worth knowing about. Uh, Millennial Esports is the group that is behind the world's fastest gamer competition. So sure, it's McLaren. Sure, it's McLaren's world's fastest gamer. Millennial Esports is the group that is sort of administrating the entire event. 
Um, it's a stripped, uh, I think it's the former. Um, uh, Mitchie, I, it, we'll, we'll talk about it. It's, it's not the, the graphics. Oh, oh, those graphics. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, it, you know what? And Sim Racing 604, it's, it's actually been out for quite some time. So if you've been to a car show and it was Project Cars, it was a variation of this. I think it's just sort of a branding thing more than anything. Um, um, and something that all companies have really provided. If you don't know this about the sim racing industry, uh, basically, iRacing has a version of iRacing that is like their, you could call it their event build, built for commercial usage. Um, same thing is true for uh, uh, R Factor. I'm 99% sure you can do the same thing for Assetto, uh, variations of that. But the minute you are a sim company, the minute you have a sim, you start getting calls from people saying, can we use it here? Your your end user license agreement, EULA, I like to call it, uh, pre prevents you from actually charging people or using it in public in that kind of circumstance. You know, you have a individual usage license, essentially. Um, this is something that they want available to the public so uh back in the day um i think his name was craig budwitz <laughs> oh craig budwitz was his name and if you were like at a trade show illegally using r factor one this is the original craig budwitz would come across your booth and he was the person in charge of the licensing for r factor and he would shut you down uh you're not allowed to use that without paying and having a contract from, in this case, it was ISI software, um, uh, allowing you to use it. You can't just build a mod of a Lexus and drive a Lexus at a trade show. You need the licensing and permission rights. And that was Craig Budwitz. I'm not, I think things are a little different. I don't think you have a guy who's literally going from trade show to, tra from trade show to trade show, policing such things. Uh, but uh, technically, we're in the same world, same usage and license. So, th again, that is the, the, the point of the pro application. Speaking of pro, and this is sort of the different, this goes back in time, Netcar Pro. This is called Netcar Pro Museum and the Return. And some people have kind of dug up the roots of Netcar Pro, which was the, the original great sim from Kuno Simulization. Uh, this is how you, I mean, this is when they really built their name as a rival. See, Max is a huge fan of Netcar. I was a huge fan of Netcar. There was something really genuine and authentic about Netcar in, in, in the early era of great Sims where things were still a little static and lacked a certain vibrance in sim racing when you're looking at like a NASCAR 2003 or some of the old R-Factor stuff as well. And then comes Netcar Pro, and it had that that natural force feedback that we all loved right out of the box. You didn't have to do a bunch of tweaking to get a great driving experience out of Netcar Pro. And it was one of the great, great sims. And we could sit here and argue all day long whether Assetto Corsa was a path, a step in that direction that we thought they were going, or whether it was a diversion to a different type of a sim than a Netcar Pro. But anyway... Uh, article here right up uh, coming from the guys from I, and I haven't gone through doing it drivingitalia.net but this is a return a rebranding a, a bringing back of Netcar Pro with some of the great mods that were available for it and uh, really showing off what the original amazing Netcar was all about and at the time if you didn't know or didn't get a chance back then or maybe you're newer to sim racing it was one of the sims that you know it, it definitely changed things it, it pulled things when we talk about sim pizza when that car pro came onto the scene it not only took over some slices but it even created some new slices into the categories that we would judge our sims by to this day um <coughs> anyway moving along just a little uh nostalgic lando gosh lando's in our news all over i don't always talk about pro drivers uh but when there are pro drivers who embrace sim racing to the level that lando norris does i do like to bring them onto the show or 
into the show and talk about um, them. Anyway, really cool article here at Goodwood.com, uh, Goodwood Road and Racing, but it's Goodwood.com. Brother got home. Uh, anyway, it's an article here about him talking about a whole bunch of things. And in this article, if you just need some good reading today, you're at work and you want to just entertain yourself, this is totally worth the read. But it talks about him getting to drive one of my all-time favorite McLarens here uh, at Goodwood. And here's a picture of him in the cockpit. There's a picture of him in the car talking about Formula One and what it's like being in one of those, you know, bottom uh, from fourth back teams in the sport where you know it's a different job and a different role if you're in one of those top three teams and what your expectations of yourself your team uh the season and all of that and how that plays a factor and and you know maybe in sim racing you're not on mclaren up against ferrari or red bull or mclaren um or or mercedes uh but you're just maybe you're an eighth or ninth place driver. You know, I talk about the struggles I have at Lionheart being a back marker. Uh, but sometimes maybe it's a matter of knowing your place and being happy. It's like maybe if you're a 28th position driver in a really cutthroat league, that that's okay. And you have to look to those days where you finished in 21st and think of that as a real good personal victory. Um, anyway, I love the aspect. He talks about sim racing. Oh, look at this car. Look at this car. Um, 7.6 liter, <laughs> the M8D Can-Am car, Can-Am Racing. That's a car I'd like to drive in sim. That's a car you don't see in sim very often. Um, so anyway, a cool write-up, and you can read that if you have the time at goodwood.com. Let's see here. You guys looking for a job? Anyone need a job? Uh, I wish I was hiring. I wish I could afford to hire all of you guys. You'd be uh, big hits here. But the Race Hut, we talk about Sim Centers. Venue manager at Sim Racing Venue, the Race Hut. Do you love motorsports and sim racing? Looking for a new role and have experience managing a venue? Then we would love to hear from you. Anyway, so they are looking for basically a venue. The, a Sim Center manager. Experience with R Factor and R Factor 2. Steam would be a bonus, but not essential. Uh, and this is the Race Hut in Oxford, UK. So if you're in the UK area or you're willing to move to the UK area, you should uh, check this out at motorsportjobs.com. Um, yeah, wouldn't it be great to see Lando go a long way, you know, and when you're not on one of those top four teams, top three teams, um, yeah, under 30K, I'm not sure uh, if that's going to fit everybody's uh, needs, but sometimes they say you do what you love and you don't work a day in your life, so maybe that pay is worth it for somebody looking for a peace of mind. <laughs> Yes, Mitchie, I agree, but look, they are at a sim center playing with our factor, and when it's dead, what do you do? You uh, you, dra you drive, you race, you come up with the ways to keep the place filled. Um, so, uh, anyway, interesting idea. I'm sure just about every sim center is hiring, so if you know of a sim center near you and you're willing to work for under 30K, go hit them up, tell them what you do, and they'll probably hire you in a minute. Sim Race Hardware News and Reviews blog showing off another new pedal set. How many pedal sets do you think there are now? Do you think that we're at the point that there are... Let's give an over and uh, over under. I'm going to throw a number out. Over under. Pedal set company. Companies that make their own pedal set. And th this doesn't mean counting two from Fnatic or two from Thrustmaster. That's Fnatic and Thrustmaster are one and two. Rick Motek would be three. Over under, are there more than 25 pedal companies available? Or are there less? Your thoughts, your opinions on that thought. All right, let's look at a few rigs, talk about what we're doing here, and then we'll move on and call it a day. Me and my dad, this isn't me, this is uh, Myco Sim, Mike, Myco SM. Me and, my, me and Dad spent the day welding a frame for my G27. Not a bad first rig. Um, I like where they got it going. I don't see how the pedals are going to get it. looks like, wow, who, somebody's really tall. 
looking at that dimensions, this guy must be eight foot tall. Uh, Matumbo got a rig. Anyway, uh, you know, maybe you're not a DIY guy, but maybe your dad is. Maybe this is a great bonding experience. Maybe you need help with your rig, get your dad, or maybe you're a dad. Maybe you get your son involved helping you build a new rig or a rig for them. Uh, anyway, I just like the post. Uh, my dad is no longer with us. I'd love to be able to spend the day welding a frame, uh, a, a, a rig with my dad. That would be a great experience. So anyway, I like that. That kind of touched my heart. And then here, look at this. This is by Kizawar Sete. Ah, I can't even say the name. We're going to put the disclaimer up. Sorry for, I'm not going to try to butcher it again. But this is also on Reddit. And this is uh, another PVC rig. We're seeing a lot of PVC rigs coming back making a big comeback with that uh the the simulator i believe that was the simulator plans that were oh so nice and so cool i should build another one of those and then and then you gotta like the pink got to like the pink um what else what else oh, look at this thing max max you need a serious beating don't you yeah smackdown all right on reddit this one's from Nitch, Nitch GTM. He's got a 49 inch ultra wide. Oh, he's questioning whether he should go to an ultra wide or keep the triples on a motion rig. He splits between VR and screens. Curious how the 49. He's just curious about things, but meanwhile, I'm like, no, nah, you're showing off that rig. Look at that giant fan he's got on him as well. Um, pretty. Oh, this is one of those windy motor. Oh, that's a crazy simulator. Those things are nutso. Look at how complicated it is just to get in and out of that rig. Anyway, that is some serious rig right there. And speaking of serious rig, I talked about the studio, talked about all the work that I've been doing here. Um, one thing I did with the green screen, which obviously I have green screen behind me, uh, I still need to do some lighting. I'm working on lighting, getting that all right. Obviously, working on audio, things have changed. So I have to get everything redialed in. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of simplicity. In fact, I'm going to show off simplicity in the moment. Uh, but one thing I wanted to be able to do was I'm going to show off a few things that have changed here. I had three different, distinctly different sets in this room, uh, driving set, building set, desk set. All right. And I had lighting for all three, all dialed in with different switches. I could turn them all on. That is what the sim pit's all about. Now, I was like, well, if I'm going to go to green screen, I need to be a lot more rollable. So I decided that everything in my life needed to get up on wheels to really do what I wanted to do with the show. And so that included my monstrosity of a rig. I mean, when I talk monstrosity, I love my R seat S1 chassis, but it is really heavy. By the time I get triple screens and a computer on my monitor stand, it is unmovable. My rig weighs so much that it takes a lot of effort to move it around. And I'm like, you know, I need to be able to move things around. So I built a platform. You can see my green screen up on the wall. You can see my S1 chassis right there. And you can see this giant five foot by four foot rolling platform that I'm building and wanted to be able to roll my rig, my desk, and everything around the studio to be able to do that. So that is why I've been working so hard and talking simplicity. Well, there's my rig up on the platform. And you can see there's not a lot of extra anything. I'm getting my wires real clean. That doesn't have the computer up or the wiring on it yet. But today is wiring day. And uh, Cody, that is going to be in the works. It's, it's like pretty much written. I just need to film it. It's just that I wanted to do, I'm going to do a little something with the green screen, not the entire show, but a portion of that show will be using the green screen. So I've just been trying to get that and some other things all dialed in, ready to go, finished off uh, to, to really hit a home run. So anyway, you can see what I've done there. That thing weighs about 600 pounds and is still hard to move around, but it can be rolled around. And yeah, it is almost a car. I should bomb that down a hill. That'd be pretty funny. So that's what I've been doing behind the scenes. And then lastly, we will finish with what's going on tonight and this weekend. Tonight, guess what day it is? It's hot lap pump day. I actually lead in the points. Can you believe it? I am not a good enough racer, but 
it's been attendance, persistence, a little bit of luck of scoring some bonus points and being there every single week uh, or every single event. But I'm leading in the points. I actually have 74 points uh, ahead of Pascal Iannucci or Patty Iannucci and Michael Borden, who are tied for second with 60 points. Um, Mike Dam, I believe, is right behind them in third. I think Climber rounds out the top five. Let me give everybody a little shout out here. Let's see. Um, Borden are tied for the number two. So Iannucci and Borden, number two. Mike Dam is in third or in the fourth spot because of those being tied. And David Clymer rounds out the top five. So tonight they're going to do things a little different. Tonight instead of a, a one man, one lap or one man, you know, go out and do your best, they're actually going to race the top three drivers for points, uh, which will be a nice different twist and make tonight's race a little different than than other. But so tonight at three o'clock my time, six o'clock Eastern, we'll be back on the air. We will have Kevin Ford on the mic. We will have two cameras down there at Rick Motech, Florida to keep an eye on those guys as well. And it should be pretty uh, cool event tonight. Uh, gluten free, you just made your own plug right there. You don't need me to do it. Gluten free sim racer asking for a shameless plug, a fellow sim YouTuber. So uh, there you go. Um, player for Real TV, loving the green screen. Thank you very much. We're going to make it better. I have a little halo around me. Not a bad fan of that. I can see the border of my box. That is unacceptable. That is not a perfect blend, but we're just getting started with things. So um, we will continue to make things better. And then this weekend, starting Saturday at 6 a.m. my time, 9 a.m. Eastern time. 24 hours of spa with the Sim Pit Rick Motech endurance team. I think we have six or seven drivers ready for, well, we have eight drivers ready. We have six or seven drivers who are going to be able to make the event and uh, should be fun. 24 hours, that'll be from 6 a.m. Saturday to 6, 6 a.m. Sunday. And then that'll be it for me on the weekend because that's going to be crazy. And um, it's a very light border. You don't think you can see it. Depends on what you're viewing on. I see it plain as day when I have a light colored background. Uh, I don't see it there, but when I have a white background, I do see it um, like there. I see it right, right there. See it? Do you guys see that? <laughs> These things, I am so obsessive, compulsive on certain things. So... Uh, anyway, ah, Chris Hay and sub QA, um, awesome, right on, very cool. So that's going to do it for today's show. Thank you for being part of the pit crew, hanging out just to talk sim racing each and every day. Love doing it. Love when you guys get involved and make your comments, make your plugs, do whatever you got to do out there. But most importantly, get out there, do some sim, sim racing. And if you can join us, we'll be giving out the password. So if you have an iRacing account, usually we don't know. They did kind of, I think, I'm thinking it's going to be the Cadillac tonight. That's what I think, but I don't know. I, I don't know for sure. We had our little teasers. If you look at the Rick Motech Twitter page, um, so there's a Cadillac. The sim. The, we are always looking for the camel as our clue. So you guys help me out. I think it's the Cadillac. No idea where though. So hot lap is going to be huge uh, with the Cadillac. That's what I see. I, I mean, I'm think. I'm looking at what would they be telling me, um, Rick Motech. Uh, Cadillac Man, the movie Cadillac, Cadillac Man with Robin Williams. I think that's it. And then the one that threw me off, though, is here's definitely a camel on this car, and it's a Pontiac. And I'm wondering if this isn't showing us the track. Someone said Mid-Ohio, I think someone guessed that was. Don't know, but 3 o'clock today, we'll find out. 3 o'clock, I, I got to represent. Uh, 3 o'clock, I've got four hours to get into that top three. I want to win this thing. If I'm ahead in the points, once you got it up, keep it up. And I think we'll finish with that. I think that's a great way to close out today's show. That's going to do it. Come back on Friday for Beyond the Sim with Billy Strange. Come back tonight and watch that Hot Lap Challenge. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.